Good morning, Interweb. World Builders Log 20. This is going to be the final video in the G-Plates tutorial section of this series. Today, we are going to look at more advanced ways of using G-Plates, specifically looking at how to weaponize topologies. Next video will be World Reveal. So when it comes to working with topologies, there is one key thing that you must do. You have to go up to the G plates menu here and down to preferences, shortcut controller command comma, and you have to have this section ticked, show topological sections. If you don't have this option ticked, literally none of this is going to work. This is really important. And I believe in newer versions of G plates, this is off by default. So you, you gotta turn it on. Otherwise, again, you're gonna have no luck, all right? So with that in the bag, I set up this new little demo world. It looks very similar to one we had before, supercontinent that we're eventually gonna split into three pieces, Western subduction zone, Eastern subduction zone. Same sort of deal as before. But again, we're gonna work with topologies. So like before, eventually we'll come to the stage where we want to split apart continents. Now the old way was to copy geometry and then individually move a bunch of vertices, which is easy to grok, but time consuming and messy. So what we can do, an alternative method is to select the supercontinent, copy geometry to digitize tool, turn this copy geometry into a line by hitting L on the keyboard. And then I'm gonna go and hit X on the keyboard to delete vertex. And I am going to delete all the points here until we're left with the coastline of one section of the continent we want to cut out. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit I on the keyboard and I'm gonna insert a point here and then also delete this point. So we have a little bit of overlap with this rift here. So L on the keyboard, create feature. I'm gonna make this an unclassified feature. Plate ID of 100, cause the blue crate on here has a plate ID of 100. I'm gonna say begins life at a thousand million years ago, goes into the distant future. And all I'm gonna do is just call this line. Then I'm gonna go next, next, and I'm gonna create a new feature collection, create and save, and save said feature collection as guides and hit save. And then I'm gonna go up to my guides here, set draw style, and I'll just make every guide black. So next I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take the geometry of the supercontinent, copy it, turn it into a line, but this time I'm gonna make a line for this coastline with a slight overlap over the ridge, or, or the rift rather. So X on the keyboard, and I'm gonna begin deleting away. Hit I, I'm just gonna make a short little stub here. X again, delete that point. Now up here, we'll have to manually add in points, which is which is fine, it's not a big deal. There won't be an awful lot of manually adding things uh, using this method. Something like that, and then I'm gonna run it down here to get an overlap. All right, L on the keyboard, create feature. Again, unclassified feature, same data, except we're gonna change the plate ID to 200, and we're gonna put it in guides and go create. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the topology menu, hotkey four, and then we're gonna hit B on the keyboard for the build new boundary topology. And we're then gonna select one of our coastlines, so this line that we created, and we're gonna come up to the right here and hit add. And you'll see that G plates takes that line and then auto completes a polygon from it. But obviously we don't want this. We want this to follow the rift to cut out this half of the continent. So we're gonna select that rift and we're gonna add that to the topology. And so with that done, we're gonna go create here on the right. Topological close plate boundary is fine. It doesn't make a difference. This again is a guideline. Plate ID of 100. We'll say it begins at a thousand, goes into the distant future. Again, doesn't matter. We're gonna delete in a second. We're gonna call it topo next, and we're gonna create a new feature collection, create and save that feature collection as topo. And again, we'll do the same thing for the other side. So four on the keyboard, B to build a new boundary topology. Then I'm gonna select the line that we created along this coast, hit add, then select the rift, and then add that to the topology, go create, same deal again, topological closed plate boundary is fine. Next, same data, just change the plate ID and save it in topo. So that is our guide work done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the topo and you'll see it cut this out and everything will be perfectly aligned. Then I'm gonna copy geometry to digitize tool and just like before, create feature, 
Continental Crust. Plate ID 100 in this case, to go with the blue Kraton. Begins life at a thousand, carries on to the distant future, and we'll call it Continent A. And we're going to save this in continents and go create. And then we're going to select that topology again, make sure it's the topology, and we're just going to delete it. Same process for the other side. Now, off air, I already set the initial supercontinent to disappear at a thousand million years ago. So if we just scroll forward, we should be able to, and if we turn off lines or guides rather, we should see that we have one continent here and one continent here. And again, all the boundaries are perfectly precise. And also off air, I set up a rotation file exactly like we've done previously. So we can now move these fellas. So I'm going to skip forward 50 million years. You know the drill. Five on the keyboard, then F. Select the continent, P, highlight children, O, enable pole. And we'll move these two. No new information here, so I'll time lapse my way through this. Now, obviously you should use the command shift K tool, the kinematics tool to check your speeds, but I'm gonna assume we got that down. So next, we want some flow lines, right? Back to a thousand million years ago. F on the keyboard, select our rift, Copy Geometry to Digitize tool. Turn it into a bunch of points. M on the keyboard. Create feature. This is just like before. Flow lines. Left plate ID is 100. Right plate ID is 200. Begins at 1000. And what you can do here, slightly different from the main series, you can just make the flow lines last for each time step. So we'll call this flow lines 1000 to 950. This should mitigate some of the problems of flow lines jumping all around the place. So next, we'll add some time steps. So we'll go from a thousand million years to the end of this time step, which is 950. Insert a bunch of points, hit OK. Next, and we'll create a new feature collection, create and save, just like before, save this as flow lines. Okay, assuming we've done that correctly, we should get some flow lines, excellent. Now at this point, we'd usually just copy the geometry of the flow lines to create some ocean crust. But let's be a little bit more detailed, right? Let's go back to a thousand million years ago. Let's hit F on the keyboard. We'll select the rift again, copy its geometry. This time, don't make a point, keep it as a line, L on the keyboard. Then go create and select mid ocean ridge. And really important here under reconstruction method, select half stage rotation. And just like the flow lines, put in the relevant plate IDs. This, in my case, blue Kraton is 100, and the green Kraton, barely see it there, up here is 200. This begins at a thousand million years ago. It'll go into the distant future. And I'm gonna just call this Mid-Ocean Ridge 1000. Next, next. And we'll create a new feature collection, create and save. Save that feature collection as Mid-Ocean Ridges. And I'm going to go down to mid ocean ridges or up rather, set draw style. I'll make these a single color and I'm going to make these dark red. If you don't see dark red, hit choose and select it from the color wheel. All right, cool. Let's see what that gets us. So now we have a mid ocean ridge that perfectly matches these yellow dots of the flow lines and is dynamically updating. It'll create a smooth animation as our continent spread, which is just really cool and will lead to kind of better, more precise uh, final outputs. So now we can put in some ocean crust. Before, what we would do, again, we would copy the geometry of the flow lines and manually move points around to match things up. Using topologies, we can be a little bit more automated, I guess. So what you can do is go back to a thousand million years, F on the keyboard, select the mid-ocean ridge, Again, copy geometry to digitize tool, make it a line, hitting L on the keyboard, go create feature, unclassify feature, we're making another guide. Reconstruction method is plate ID, and we'll say we'll give this one the plate ID of the blue craton. Begins at a thousand, this future is fine, and we'll just call this line. Next, next, and we'll put this in our guides layer and go create. With that mid ocean ridge still selected, I want to copy geometry to digitize tool. Again, keep it as a line, L on the keyboard then go to create feature, same thing again, except we're going to change the plate ID to 200. So one line is going to go with this continent. Everything else is the same, next, next, and go guides. So now what happens if we turn on our guides layer, 
we will get two lines that emanate from this mid-ocean ridge that stick to the coastlines. And hopefully you can all see where we're going to go with this in a second. We'll go to the end of the timestamp. Four on the keyboard for our topologies. And again, B to build a new boundary topology. I'm going to select this line that we've made. I'm going to hit add. And then I'm going to select the mid-ocean ridge and I'm going to hit add. And oh, would you look at G plates has like auto completed the polygon. Very cool. We go create. Again, what you call this doesn't matter. This is again a guide. Next, plate ID 100 we'll call it. Doesn't matter. None of this matters. Next, next. I'll put it in topo and we'll go create. We'll do the same on the other side. So again, we'll go to B to build new boundary topology. I'm going to select the mid-ocean ridge. I'm going to go add. And then I'm going to select the coastline here and go add. Go to create. Everything's the same, except we'll change the plate ID. And we'll save it in topo. And just like we did with the continents, then we can select our topos. Copy geometry digitize tool, create feature. This is ocean crust. Plate ID of 100. Begins life at 950. Into the distant future, and we'll call this ocean crust 950. And we'll create a new feature collection, create and save. And we'll save said feature collection as ocean crust, just like before. Oh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to file again, like before import, import raster, and I'm going to select an ocean PNG here. I'm going to open it. Doesn't matter. Next, next, next. Everything's fine. Create a feature collection. Wonderful. I'm going to go down to the ocean layer. We just imported here. I'll change the name of the layer, rename layer to ocean color. Yeah. And then reconstruct the polygons, add new connection. And I want to connect this to the ocean crusts. Beautiful. And I'm going to move the mid-ocean ridges above the ocean crust. And I'll also move my guides above the ocean crust. And actually, most things will need to go above the ocean crust. Flow lines should go above. Subduction zones should go above. Rifts should go above. Cratons and continents don't matter per se. Yeah, okay, cool. And then again, F on the keyboard. We'll select the other topology. Copy Geometry Digitize Tool, Create Feature. Same thing again, Ocean Crust. Plate ID of 200, everything's the same. Next, next, and pull in Ocean Crusts. With the topo still selected, delete said topo. It served its purpose. And then over here, with the topo selected, delete that topo. It has also served its purpose. So hopefully you can see that using these topos should save you an awful lot of time, particularly if there's a lot of ocean to fill in. It's far more efficient and neater than manually drawing it in, although it's just, it's not as intuitive. Okay, what do we need to do next? We need to do some drift correction. Same as before, but worth going over it for the sake of reinforcement, Commander Control M, save all changes, then open up your rotation file, take the newest entry, copy it, immediately above it, and change the date to 1.0. Same thing here. And for plate ID 300, it doesn't matter yet. Save, close, back in G plates, Commander Control M, rotation file, and then reload. And you'll notice that because the flow lines were limited to just the time step we're working in, nothing's really broken, which is kind of cool. Now at this point, let's split these two continents apart. Just like before, that means selecting the failed rift, copying geometry to digitize tool, make it a line, hit I, and extend it out so it severs the entire plate. L on the keyboard, create feature, you know the drill. Continental rift, next plate ID of one. That's our static plate ID, reserved for rifts plus hotspot related things. Begins at 950, correct, goes into the distant future, correct. And this is Rift 950. Next, next. And we'll put that into, where is it? Rifts and go create. So next we need to split apart everything that crosses the rift. So everything up here, ocean crusts, guidelines, continents, subduction zones, have to be made into one thing, unified by one plate ID and the same thing down here. I'm going to time lapse through anything that isn't topology related just to save a little bit of time. The method is the same as previously discussed.
Oh, and I guess worth noting here for this mid-ocean ridge, because we're doing this half-stage rotation, we split it. So we'll end up with one copy that goes from 100 to 200, like we originally coded. And then here, we want it to go from 100 to 300. So right plate ID here, we change it from 200 to 300. Fairly self-explanatory, but just worth putting in. And I'm pretty sure that's everything split apart. Okay, and while we're at it, we might as well add in missing plate boundaries here because we're going to use those later on to create entire plates in a way that we wouldn't be able to do in the manual section, or at least not comfortably. So I know that this continent's going to want to go that away and this continent's going to want to go that away. So subduction zone will likely continue along here and also here. So I'm going to put those in, L on the keyboard. In fact, actually, I'm going to go F on the keyboard. I'm going to select that subduction zone, copy geometry to digitize tool, hit I on the keyboard to insert some points. And I'm just going to insert a point here. We need not connect this up perfectly to the end. And you'll see why at the at much later in the video. Okay. And I'm going to go X and I'm going to delete these points. L on the keyboard, just so we get a nice attachment here. So create feature. Subduction zone, plate ID is 300, correct, begins at 950, correct, goes to distant future, correct. We'll call this sub 950. Next, next, and we'll put this into subduction zones and go create. Same deal here and here, based on the movement of how the continents, how I want the continents to go. And in fact, we'll talk about what's happening up here later. All right, now we decouple these two, which means going controller command M, saving all changes, going to reconstruction, view total reconstruction bold, equivalent rotations relative to anchor plate. And we'll just shimmy that up there. And then we'll open up the rotation file. And like before, we want to decouple 300 from 200. So I am going to take this line of 300, paste it above, insert the current time step, 950, paste that above, find the coordinates, which in this instance are going to be exact same as the ones already noted above, if I'm not mistaken, they are. So I'm just gonna copy those and I'm gonna paste them in this other line here. Change the conjugate plate ID to 000, so it's no longer tied to 200. Same deal here. Copy this fella, paste them above and put in 1.0 here to make our drift correction. Again, I'm, I'm zipping by this because it was covered in greater detail in previous videos. So this is just a sort of recap. Drift correction, drift correction, drift correction. Fantastic. Save, close, close, G plates, controller command M, rotation file, reload. So assuming we've done everything correctly, we should be able to move these two independently. F on the keyboard, select the continent. Oh, oh God, we forgot to split the continents. Never mind, sorry, back up. 950. So, four on the keyboard, select topology. Just like before, we're going to go B then to build new boundary topology. We want to create this new continent here. So, we are going to select a line, this line here. We're going to go add. We're going to select the rift. We're going to go add. And we're going to select the other line here and we're gonna go add. All going well, this should have created that shape for us. Now, it's not relevant here, but it will be when you have far more complicated shapes. When adding lines like this or sections to the topology, make sure you work in a strict clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. So if we start with this line, we'll follow the next line and around. Or start with this line, follow the next line, then this line. If you just like randomly add lines out of sequence, G plates will auto complete the polygon in just weird ways. So always work strictly clockwise or counterclockwise, really important. So we go create, again, doesn't matter. We'll stick with what is uh, auto completed here. Plate ID of 200, sure, doesn't, uh, well, make it 950, yeah. 950, doesn't really matter because we're just going to delete it. Everything's fine. Next, next, put this in topo, go create. We'll create a topo for the other side as well. So again, four on the keyboard, then B to build a new boundary topology. I'm going to select this line here. We're gonna go add. And then again, working this time in a counterclockwise fashion, I'm gonna add this line. And then I'm gonna add this rift. 
and we go create. Doesn't matter. Play ID of 300, everything else is the same. Next, next, and we go topo. So now we want to uh, select one of our topos. Now you'll note here, there's a little bit of an inaccuracy here. And this is because when I placed my point, I didn't perfectly match things up or actually rather when I split this line, it wasn't precisely split along this rift, but that won't be a problem. We can fix it when we create the actual condiment. So we go copy geometry to digitize tool, then go X on the keyboard and then just delete this point here and everything's gravy. G, create feature, continental crust, plate ID of 200, whoop, 200, there we go. Begins life at 900, goes in the distant future, cool. And this is continent B. And we put that into continents, excellent. Now we'll select the other topology and this one did work out neat for us, which is cool. Copy geometry digitize tool, create feature, continental crust, Everything's the same, except we change the plate ID to 300. And we put that in continents and we go done. Then with the topology still selected, delete it. Go back up to other topology, delete that, and then go back to select the main continent, continent BC. Go to edit feature, control or command E. And then we are going to set that to disappear at 950. Done. So now we should be able to move these boils. So forward one time step, five on the keyboard, then F to select the consonant, P, and I'm gonna I'm gonna time lapse through this because there's nothing new here. It's just moving consonants like we've always done. Cool gravy. Same like before, we got some flow lines to add. Select the rift or back one time step, then select the rift. Copy geometry digitize tool, make it into a bunch of points, create feature, flow lines. Left plate ID is going to be 200, the green. Right plate ID is going to be 300, the pink from 950. And again, we'll just do it per time step. 950 to 900, flow lines, 950 to 900. Next, and we'll go add, and then we'll go 950 all the way to 900, insert a bunch of points, go OK. Next, I'm gonna put that in flow lines and go create. And then we can check if our movement is decent. Yes, it is. No adjacent flow lines are overlapping. Aren't we just awesome? So then we can select the rift again, copy geometry digitize tool, hit L on the keyboard to make it align, go to create feature, just like before, mid ocean ridge. Very important, half stage rotation. So left plate ID is going to be 200 again, just like with the flow lines. Right plate ID is 300, 950, but this time to the distant future, mid ocean ridge, 950. Next, next, and we'll put this into mid ocean ridges and go create. Delightful. I'm going to time lapse through adding the flow lines on these sections here because no new information. So in keeping with what we're doing, we'd like to add some ocean crust now because it goes flow lines, mid ocean ridge, guidelines, ocean crust. That's kind of the workflow. But there's this big old hole here that's preventing us from copying a line off this mid ocean ridge that can then be sent with this coastline here from which we can build a topology. So we're going to need to complete this section here and we're going to do so in a relatively new way to kind of aid in uh, better animations. So I'm going to go back to 950 here and I am going to select a section of Ocean Crust. So let's say, or not Ocean Crust, sorry, of Mid Ocean Ridge. So I'm going to select the Mid Ocean Ridge here, we'll say. I'm going to copy that geometry. I'm going to hit I on the keyboard to insert a point and I'm just going to insert any random point beyond this line. So like through the triple junction and beyond. So just somewhere here, we'll say. Then I'm gonna hit X on the keyboard. I'm gonna delete away everything that's a duplicate. So we're left with just this new section. If it disappears, hit L and it'll come back. I'm gonna to go to create feature. Gonna make this a mid ocean ridge, half stage rotation. Plate ID is 100 and 200 because we're copying it off the mid ocean ridge whose two plate IDs were 100 and 200. 
Begins at 9.50, goes into the distant future. Mid-Ocean Ridge, 9.50. Next, next, and we'll put this in Mid-Ocean Ridges and we'll go create. Okay, so hopefully then we'll see that it's just a continuation of this Mid-Ocean Ridge. And hopefully you're gonna see that what we're gonna do is continue each of these Mid-Ocean Ridges until they all meet at a point in the middle. So, back to 9.50. All right, and now we have this. So very obviously not what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to go F on the keyboard. We're going to hit V and we're just going to move these lines around to make them intersect. So let's say we want an intersection point somewhere roughly in the middle of this triangle. So I'm going to go here. Then I'm going to select the next portion, V on the keyboard. I'm going to move that to about there perhaps. Then F on the keyboard. V, move that, and here's where we want to be a little bit more precise. To get this point really at that intersection. Something like that is about as precise as it can be. I'm also going to insert some points on these sections here, just to tidy it up a little bit, because we don't need all of this excess. So then I'm going to go X, just delete it back. You don't have to do this, it's just, it's just a little bit neater. And delete this back. Okay, cool, let's play that and see what we got. Beautiful. And bearing in mind, I've color coded this mid-ocean ridge dark red. So this isn't the final mid-ocean ridge that we'll get. These are, again, all guidelines. We can do a cool thing later on. Regardless, now we have some lines that we can add to a topology to help us create things quicker. Okay, so now that we got this, we can create things called topo lines. So far we've been working with topo boundaries, but now we can create topo lines to really polish off this mid-ocean ridge structure we have here. So I'm gonna hit four on the keyboard, and this time I'm gonna hit, I think it's, is it H? Yes, it's H, or it's this button here, build new line topology. And just like with a boundary topology, it's the same thing. You add a bunch of line segments, except this time it won't autocomplete a polygon, it'll create a line one that is dynamic and can be elastically deformed, which is cool. So I am going to select the first bit of the mid-ocean ridge. I'm gonna add that to the line. Then I'm gonna add this bit of the mid-ocean ridge. I'm gonna add that to the line. Then I'm gonna add the next bit, add that to the line, and then add this bit and add that to the line. Okay, we're gonna to go to create. We are going to go to, hmm, what are we gonna to go to? Um, Yeah, mid-ocean ridge will do. Mid Ocean Ridge. Next, beginning time. Now we are going to put its beginning time at the oldest section of this line. So this bit up here was created all the way back at a thousand million years ago. So we're gonna say this goes from a thousand million years ago to the distant future. And we're not gonna call this topo because this isn't a guide, this is the final thing. We're gonna call this just divergent. We're not gonna give it a date because this line contains within it multiple objects of different dates. So we're just gonna call it a divergent boundary. Next, next, and we're gonna create a new feature collection, create and save, and we are going to save this feature collection as divergent. Okay, so now we take our divergent boundary here and we're gonna move it all the way to the top. Very cool looking yellow, not a canonical color for mid-ocean ridges. So we're gonna twiddle down the little drop down arrow, set draw style, single color and this time because it's finalized we're going to make this bright red and we'll go choose and you might be like well big whoop why did you do that the cool thing about topologies is that you can add stuff to a topology that doesn't already exist so if i get rid of my mid-ocean ridges there and scroll all the way back to the start of the simulation in fact i'll jump back for dramatic effect we see that this line is only yay long right because that's all that exists of the bits that we've told the line to contain and as we go through this simulation it will dynamically update as and when new lines appear now that little glitch there don't worry about it but to see here look at the cool animation it's dynamically expanding very pretty so we will yeah again don't worry about that it's fine that will go away in a second so we're going to jump to 900 again and we're going to do the same process for this section here 
and this section here. And if we turn on Divergent, we'll see now we have a full set. So I think hopefully now that little glitch there will be solved. Yeah, perfect. So it will turn off Mid-Ocean Ridges again and have just have a look at how smooth this animation is. It's so cool. Oh, damn it, it's still there. Wonderful. So those little glitches, they usually resolve themselves, though not always. G-Plates is still G-Plates. And I think it's likely a consequence of not being entirely precise at the triple junction. In the dry run I did of this video, it was perfectly smooth. G-Plates giveth, G-Plates take it away. Okay, let's do some coastline stuff. And then again, the more the more stuff you have to fill, the more topologies really help. So I am going to go to 950. Dear Lord, what even are you doing there, G-Plates? Oi, regardless, I am going to select that <laughs> crazy line. I'm going to go to Copy Geometry Digitize Tool. I'm going to turn it into a line. And chances are, if it's because of inaccuracies at the triple point, I should just be able to delete these two points and all is gravy. Yeah, and that is the case. So it's just a mild inaccuracy. L on the keyboard, create feature, unclassified feature. Uh, this is by plate ID, and we're gonna send this up with 200, the green crate on. 950, and yada, 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 that's fine. That all looks good to me. Line, and save this in guides, and go create. And I'm gonna do the same thing for each divergent boundary. Oh, look at that, a well-behaved line. Thank you very much. Okay, now that we got all of our guides, say with me, topologies. So four on the keyboard, B to build a new boundary, and we can select this divergent zone, add it, select this divergent zone, add that, create feature, sure, topological close plate boundary, next plate D 200, 900, and just topple and save it in topo and go create. Same thing for this topology here and this topology here. And I suppose it's worth making explicit the way I'm working here. Like I created all of the guides all at once and I just created all the topologies all at once. And then I'm gonna do all the ocean crust all at once. And the reason for this is that G plates remembers menus to a certain extent. So if you create all like features all at once, you can blitz through the menus really fast. If you went like guide, topo, ocean crust, guide, topo, ocean crust, you'd have to constantly re-enter all the data into the menus. So work with one class of features in one go and then move on to the next. Speaking of which, ocean crusts. So let's select that topo. Copy Geometry Digitize tool. And again, here, here's where it really comes in clutch. Like it's such a big amount to have to draw in. We just go create feature, ocean crust, plate ID of 200, create it at 900, ocean crust 900. Now that's the data filled in for the menus. So all we'll need to do is just change the plate ID and blitz through the menus and put it into ocean crust and go create. Boom, with the topo selected, delete it. Select next topo, rinse and repeat. So you don't even need to read any of this. I just go next, 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 and go create. Because everything's already auto-filled out. And then delete the topo. So there's kind of a there's kind of a groove you can get into uh, to make things go quicker. I won't say quick because like it's G plates, but quicker. Change the plate ID and then everything's fine. Next, 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 next. Create. Done. Oh, sugar. And that topo we need to get rid of. Topo. And delete. Boom. Let's have a play. Oh, things are drifting back, so we'll put in some drift correction. Command or Control M, save all changes. Open up a rotation file, or more accurately, open up the rotation file. Don't just open up a random rotation file. That's not going to do you any good. And we'll take our 900 time step coordinates and paste them into drift correction. One, two, and three. Save, close, G plates, Controller Command M, rotation file, reboot. And once again, the rotation lines haven't broken because we're only limiting them to a single time step. So that is 
basically the gist of this video. That is how you use topologies in terms of like creating ocean crust and moving continents around. You can also use topologies to create entire plates so you can make cool animations of your plates growing and shrinking over time. This is always a very much trial and error process for me. Like I haven't got like a kind of slick ABC style workflow to make this happen. So this, this part portion of the, the video might get a little messy, but I'm still very much trying to figure out the, the slickest way of doing this. Okay, so let's start with the easier plates, namely plates B and plate C. So I'm going to start there. I'm going to go back to the start of the simulation when this section of the divergent boundary first appeared. I'm going to select a mid-ocean ridge, the mid-ocean ridge, copy geometry digitize tool. I'm going to turn it to points. I'm going to hit X on the keyboard and I'm going to delete back all of these points until we're left with just one here. Okay, and we're going to use it as a kind of anchor. You'll see in a second. So create feature. This would be an unclassified feature. Plate ID. Oh, no, it doesn't go by plate ID. It has to go by half stage rotation. It must remain equidistant between plate ID 100 and plate ID 200. Begins at 1000, continues into distant future. And I'm just going to call this point. Again, no point dating it. It's just a guide and therefore goes into guides and go create. Okay, so that will stick, that black dot, it's a bit hard to see, but that black dot there will stick with the mid-ocean ridge the entire way through the simulation. Okay, now I want to do the same thing here. So that first appeared at 950, I take it. So you go F on the keyboard. I'm going to select that mid-ocean ridge, copy geometry digitize tool, turn it into points by hitting M, hit X, delete back these points. So we're just left with the um, edge one there. M on the keyboard to bring it back, create feature, unclassified feature, half stage rotation. This is between 200 and 300. Begins at 950 and we'll call it a point and we'll put it into guides. Okay, so now we have a point here and a point here. Perfect. So we'll go to the end of the simulation then and we're gonna hit four on the keyboard and then H to build a topo line. And basically what we're going to do is much like with the divergent zones here, we're going to make a convergent zone, a subduction zone out of topologies. So I'm going to select that point. I'm going to add it. I'm going to select this point. Again, work in a logical sequential manner. I'm going to add this subduction zone. Then I'm going to add this subduction zone. And then I'm going to tie that to this point and go add. Okay, you'll see that it auto completes for us very nicely. We go create. This is a subduction zone. Begins at the time of the earliest section, which is a thousand million years ago in this instance. And this is not topo, this is a final thing. So we're going to call this converge, Unt, convergent. Next, next, create a new feature collection, create and save. And we will save this as convergent. And we'll close and we'll take convergent, put it at the top, it's already there, excellent. We're going to give it a color indicative of subduction zones, the canonical blue color. Okay, so hopefully then at all points in this simulation, with a few exceptions, there'll be a complete boundary on this plate now. So it starts here. Okay, cool, nice. Okay, so let's do the same for this boundary here. So immediately the first thing I think I want to do is put in another point here, another anchoring point. So go over to a thousand, F on the keyboard, select that mid-ocean ridge, copy geometry digitize tool, make it points, hit X, and I'm gonna delete back until we're just left with that one point, create feature, unclassified feature, half stage rotation. This is between 100 and 300, begins at a thousand, is a point, next, next, and we'll put this in guides and go create. Okay, so this is a little trickier. Remember the movement of this BC continent is that away. So we have subduction zones to the north and to the east because it's traveling this sort of direction. This isn't a divergent boundary. It's not a mid-ocean ridge. It's not a convergent boundary. It's not a subduction zone because that would indicate movement this way as well, downwards to the south, which isn't occurring at this stage. So therefore, by process of elimination, it's going to have to be the third type of boundary, a transform boundary. So I am going to... And I think this will suffice. God, I hope so. I'm going to select that 
subduction zone, and I'll make an anchor here. So between these two points then, I'll be able to create a topo line for a transform boundary. So I'm gonna go copy geometry digitize tool, turn it to points, hit X, and go M, create unclassified feature, now not half stage rotation, plate ID, and this is gonna go with 300. So it just sticks to that subduction zone. Begins at a thousand, yada, yada, yada. Next, and we'll put it in guides with these two points. Now, hopefully I should be able to go to four and then go to H to build a line. I'm gonna select that point, I'm gonna add, and then I'm gonna select this point, and I'm gonna add, all right? It will create a line for us. We go create, we'll make this a transform boundary. Begins at a thousand, sure. We'll call it transform, next, next. And we'll create a new feature collection, create and save. And we will save this as transform. And we'll go close. Twiddle down the drop down menu, set draw style. Canonical transform boundary color is green. And we'll go choose. Okay, so let's see what we got thus far. Okay, cool. All right, so that's everything's gravy there. But at this point, the transform boundary, because the mid ocean ridge has opened up and this continent is going this way. At this point, that transform boundary turns into a subduction zone. So I'm gonna go F on the keyboard. I'm gonna select that, edit feature. Doesn't go into the distant future, just goes till 9.50. Okay, let's see that. And again, very much trial and error sort of stuff here. Goes along, bam, cool. Right, brilliant. Okay, so now we're gonna to need to make this subduction zone. So again, we'll make a line, we're gonna take this subduction zone and in fact actually no we're going to take that point we're going to add that we're going to take this subduction zone and we're going to add that and then we're going to take that line and we're going to add that so it's going to continue and then we can just skip across here and attach it to this point because that's all one big subduction zone at this point so we'll go create convergent or not convergent. Subduction zone begins at, the oldest piece is at a thousand. And we'll call this convergent. Next, next, and we'll put it in convergent, create. Okay, let's see how that turned out. Gravy, 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 gravy. All right, continent one, the hardest continent. So again, we'll scan through. So what's happening here, this is going in a southwesterly direction so we have subduction zone along here that subduction zone will just continue all the way along don't feel comfortable calling this a subduction zone as well don't feel comfortable calling it a mid-ocean ridge so again by process of simulation we're going to have a transform boundary all along here for the entirety of this plate's existence i think so let's do the convergent boundary first. I think that's the easiest. So we'll select this chap, we'll add him. We'll select this subduction zone and add that. And then here, G plates can auto complete across to this point. And we'll add that. Okay, create subduction zone. Oldest portion is a thousand million years ago. Great, convergent. Next, next, save and convergent and go create. All right, so again, smooth dynamically updating boundaries, pretty cool. And just like before, we'll span a transform boundary along here. So I figure I'm going to need another point here. So I'm gonna take my subduction zone, copy geometry digitize tool, create a point, X, M on the keyboard, create feature, unclassified feature, plate ID, it has to go with everything that's 100,000, yada, 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 good. Pulling guides, good. And then four and H to build a line, select point, add, select the other point, add that. G plates auto completes, wonderful, create. This is a transform, a thousand, yeah, not convergent, transform. Next, next, and we'll put this in transform and go create. Okay, cool, now I'm glad this came up, right? So have a look, G plates, again, doing an admirable job. It's just creating like the shortest straight line distance between here and here, between these two points. But notice as we go through the simulation, this cuts across the ocean crust, which is not wonderful. Like we'd want this ocean crust to be contained within this plate here. So what we can do, what we can do is we can create a line here or a series of points if you so desire, such that this line snaps to it. We include this portion of the line 
in the topology. So if I go to, I think 950 will do us. Yeah, at 950, I'm gonna draw, when this first is created, I'm gonna draw this line here. And I think a line is probably the way to go. And I think just for the sake of neatness and making sure every, all these points are exactly where they should be, I'm gonna take this topology here, copy geometry digitize tool, turn it into a line, hit X, and I'm gonna delete away these points. So I'm left with this line where the vertices are precisely matching with already established vertices. L on the keyboard, create feature, unclassified feature, plate ID of 100, correct, begins at not 1000, begins at 950. And we'll call this transform and we'll date it 950. Next, next, and we'll create a new feature collection for this. Create and save, because this is like a transform guide. Save feature collection as, we'll save it as transform faults. Okay, and then we'll go to our transform faults. Where are you? You are here. Twiddle down, we'll set draw style. And just like we did for the subduction zones and the mid ocean ridges, we'll just give a dark version of that color. So I have pre set up dark green. So we'll make this dark green and go choose. Hard to see, I know, but it is there and it is dark green. So at this point, when this bit of ocean crust is created, I want this topology to conform to this line. Okay. So what we can do here is we can go four on the keyboard to bring up the topology. We can select this topology and then new feature here. We can go down to the bottom here, edit topological sections or E as a shortcut. Now, this menu is not wonderfully designed. So bear with it, you'll get it eventually. It's just, it's a bit obtuse. I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit here so we can see what's going on. So look what we got here. We have a green feature that's labeled unclassified and then a blue feature that's labeled unclassified. And then we have this insertion point indicates where new topology section will be added. And if you look up on the screen here, we have a green unclassified feature, that's our point. And then we have a blue unclassified feature, which is also our point. We want to add this line in between this point and this point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hover over actions, see this actions column here, and we're basically just gonna randomly kick, click buttons until this insertion point falls between our two unclassified features. So I think it's just up once should do it. Yeah, so we have unclassified feature, put stuff, new stuff in, and then unclassified feature, right? So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna select that line and I'm going to add it to the topology and it snaps and we go apply, all right? So up until that point, now again, this won't result in a perfectly smooth animation and I'm sure with points and stuff, you could make it conform earlier, but for the sake of demonstration, this is good enough. So this line is spanning between the two points up until 950, at which point it snaps. Again, not the smoothest thing in the world, but fine. And then from there on in, it's plain sailing. Excellent. Let's have a play and see what's happening. Perfect, cool, that's perfect. And so that brings us to the final thing in this video, creating actual plates. So if we go back to the start of simulation. So notice we have a bunch of lines representing our plate boundaries. We can add them together to create a topology for our plates. So let's do that. Let's start with this plate here. So again, four on the keyboard for topology. I wanna to create a new boundary topology. I'm gonna take, again, work clockwise or counterclockwise, very important. I'm gonna take this convergence zone, make sure you take the convergence zone and not the subduction zone, take the topology. So we're putting topologies in topologies here. So I am taking the convergence zone. I'm gonna add that to my boundary. I am taking the divergent zone, this one here. Again, make sure you take the topology, add that. And then I'm gonna take the transform and I'm gonna go add that. And again, hopefully as we scroll through, we should see this, yeah, that shape dynamically, perfectly within reason, marks out our plate boundary. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So we're gonna to go to create. This one we're gonna call a closed plate boundary. We go and go to next. We're gonna give it a plate ID, say 100. Oldest portion here is a thousand million years ago. So we'll begin at a thousand million years and it continues on to the end of the simulation. And we're just gonna call this plate A. 
next, next, and then we go create new feature collection, create and save, and we'll save this feature collection as plates. Okay, so then I'll take my plates and I'll put them below our boundaries here. So the boundaries sit on top of the plates. And then tilt down the drop down arrow, go to fill polygons, and I will drop that down to a very low opacity, something like that. Okay, so now we have our tectonic plate dynamically updating and morphing over time, which is just so cool. I love this so much. Okay, let's do that for the rest of them. So we'll go 1000. Now here we have one plate that will later split into two. So we'll have to keep that in mind. Again, four on the keyboard, create boundary topology, B on the keyboard, and I'm going to add this subduction zone, not subduction zone, sorry, divergent zone. We're gonna go add, again, make sure you select topologies. Then we're going to, oh, let me think about this. Okay, I'm gonna add the convergent. I may need to go back and input the transform boundary as well. No, 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 it has to be transform. Never mind, transform add then i want to add again look i'm working in a counterclockwise manner here then i add, want to add the convergence zone add and then i want to add the other convergence zone and we'll add that now there may be an issue here with overlapping boundaries we'll, we'll see and we'll bug fix it if needs if needs be so i'm going to go create close plate topology wonderful this has a plate id of 200 it begins at a thousand, yes, but it only lasts until 950, at which point it splits off into two other plates. And this is plate BC. And so we'll put that in plates and we'll go create. Okay, so mm, that, that, that opacity is quite low. Hold on, yeah, it's a little bit better. All right, we're good, we're good. It worked out okay, cool. All right, 950. So again, at 950, we have splitting. So this becomes its own plate and then this becomes its own plate. So again, four on the keyboard, create new topological boundary, B on the keyboard select that divergent boundary divergent topology we may need to do some editing here because uh that could po cause an issue but we'll see we'll go to add and then hold on a second we want to add yeah and we can just add all of this section and we should be fine we should be okay okay create close plate boundary play id of 200 great uh, this will begin at 950 and go into the distant future. And this is just going to be plate B. So next, next, and put in plates and go create. Have you broken anything? God, I'm being remarkably lucky here. Sandboxing this did not go so smooth. But then again, sandboxing this didn't produce this weird artifact here. So, you know, again, G plates giveth, G plates take it away. Okay, and now the final plate, and that is us done. Four on the keyboard, B to build a boundary. And again, I want to go, I want to take this divergent boundary, I want to add it. I want to take this convergent boundary and add that. And that's perfect. That should work. Create, close plate boundary, plate ID of 300, begins at 950, goes to the end. That is plate C, next, next. And we'll put that in plates and we'll go create. And does it work? Oh my God, I'm so lucky today. Yes, excellent. And then again, having the boundaries in, having the plates in at this, it, it just enables you to produce more animations and have more information about your world. Like just so cool in my opinion. And I mean, just look how cool that looks. Like it's so cool, it's so cool. All right, that was that for this video and for this whole like mini tutorial section. Like I said at start, world review next time. Thank you so much to World Building Pasta, whose methodology this is. Thanks to Van Van Gogh, resident artist. Thanks to you for watching. Thanks to the patrons for supporting the show. You are all beautiful, beautiful nerds. Until next time, Edgar out.